Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, they bought a new home and then realized something or someone they couldn't see was already living there. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Sure is. If you have a real ghost story, we would really like to hear about it. Call in anytime at 855-853-4802. You can write in at Real Ghost Stories Online. We would like that. And if you want an ad-free version of the show, along with advanced episodes, you get access to the archive. You can become a premium subscriber easily through Apple Podcasts. You can try it for three days free. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes and Kathy, Kathy Gordon. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> well, you know, it is it is really good. I'm so glad to be here. This is so much fun doing this whole gig with you. Is, Isn't it, is it that, fun? It's fun. A, I like talking about ghost gig? stories. I guess it's a gig. I guess it's a gig. I don't know. I don't know. It's really it's just fun, like a little chat. Yeah. I really I like love our it. ghost chats. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to be with you. I always say that it's fun, though, because then you hear these stories and then you're like, well, I'm not as crazy as I thought I was. Well, well, they're good, at, you know. But it's nice like, to know other I people. just like a good old-fashioned scare, too. And we've had some good ones lately. We've had some real good stories. It's good to know that it's not just you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's right. Here's our story today. I have a few interesting stories, which I believe are paranormal. But for now, I will just focus on events that occurred in my house my parents owned in Mocaine, Missouri, about 18 years ago. Are you familiar with Mocaine, Missouri? No, but you know I'm going to look it up. Of course you are. I d- I've never heard of it. My guess is, it, I'm going to say as you look it up, it's a town under 4,000 people. Hmm. Um, they lived there about 18 years ago. I believe this house was built in the 1930s, and if I remember correctly... There was only one or two families that lived in it before we bought it. Over the 10-year span that my parents owned the house, there were numerous events, too many to mention in detail. So I will try to keep it as short as possible and just give a brief mention of some of the more memorable happenings. I should start off by stating that I have three sisters. My oldest and I are two years apart. She would have been about 19 at the time we moved in. I would have been about 17. And then there's a six-year gap between me and the younger set of sisters. They would have been about 11 and 7. My older sister and I shared a bedroom in the house, and the younger sisters shared a bedroom. Our bedrooms were connected via a doorway. They literally had to walk through our room to get to theirs. The first occurrence was late one night, just after we moved in, when my older sister and I were up late in our room, just sitting around talking. We heard what sounded like the legs of furniture being pushed across the cement floor of the basement below us. However, we knew there was no furniture in the basement. Since the basement was dug out by hand by whoever built the house, there was no way to get into the house from the basement. You had to go outside and around the back of the house to enter the basement. It was inconvenient Mm -hmm. and creepy, so we didn't even store anything down there. Let me just preface that this next part with you're going to relate to this. Okay. Eventually, we would notice that an angel figurine that we had on a shelf would turn around a full 180 degrees during the night when we slept. We would check it before we went to bed and wake up the next morning and it would be turned face to the wall in the direction of our younger sister's room. No other figurines on the shelf ever moved. This happened numerous times and we could never figure out how or why it happened. And that happens in your house all the time. It sure does. It does. And it's just like in this situation, It was. it's a select thing, right? There's. I have some pictures on a dresser, and I walk in there every so often, and one of the pictures will be completely turned around facing the wall. It's just so, I, yeah. I live, why? I live by myself. Yeah. I mean, I have a dog. But he's a little dog. He can't jump up on top of the dresser. Now, if you had cats, you can blame anything on a cat. I could blame. Yep. We can blame so much on cats, so but much. not. But even cats aren't going to com- continue to turn a, something around. And usually, cats just knock it off. That's right. Now we have talked about this before. Radios and TVs coming on and off. The radio in our younger sister's room was notorious for turning on, off, up, and down. 
It would be easy to blame on an electrical problem, except for the fact that it seemed to do this in response to things we would say. One night, my little sister and her friend were having a sleepover. They had the radio up too loud for my liking, and I asked them to turn it down. It turned down immediately. And before I could even thank them, they came running out of the room, terrified and screaming. They said they hadn't touched it. It turned down on its own. There were multiple times we would go into that room and sit on the bed and just wait for it, making remarks as to whether or not it would happen. And sure enough, it would turn on and we would take off running. It was almost like a thrill-seeking game for us to see if it would turn on or not. (laughs) And we were rarely disappointed. That makes me laugh. It's almost like some sort of weird radio Ouija board that, you know, you you ask a question or you ask something of it and it turns up and down. Volume up for yes, down for no. Exactly. We returned home one occasion after the entire family had gone to a holiday event and found our dog locked in that bedroom. That room had one of those little cheap bolt locks, the kind you lift up and slide over to latch. It was locked from the inside. She was Mm. inside crying and whimpering, waiting for someone to let her out. Which house did that happen to you? Well, it was um, in Colby, Kansas. There was a little house that we had just rented it was on range if that oh, helps yeah, you any yeah, at yeah. all, Carol. Uh-huh. And we and came home and the dog is down in the basement locked in a Shiloh. In, yeah. Shiloh is locked into what would be like a shop room with a big heavy shop door on it that's completely shut and locked. And we're like, How does this dog lock a door and get in here and shut this heavy door anyway? And the lights were on too. That was also weird. Because we obviously hadn't left the lights on downstairs in the basement. So, yeah, I I know. I know what she's talking about. Continuing. I think the most chilling thing that happened was one day after my younger sisters got home from school, I'd been doing laundry and asked them to put theirs away. They went to the room and then they came back out arguing because the room was a mess. I went in to find drawers open and the clothes were thrown all around the room. Neither one would take the blame for creating the mess. They blamed each other. I told them it didn't matter who did it. They were both going to clean it up. So I watched as they picked up the mess of the clothes, put them in the dressers, and closed the drawers. Then I followed them out of the room and asked them to take out the trash while I finished laundry. They were both outside, and I went in to take the last pile of their laundry to their room When I opened the door, there in the middle of the floor was a nice little stack of clothes that they had just put away, and the dresser drawer was open once again. I was so freaked out that I just threw the clothes I had in my hands on the floor and closed the door. Those poor kids got to the point they wouldn't even sleep in that bedroom. They slept on the couch in the living room. The bathroom had issues of its own. I think they lived in a house we used to live in. Oh, I think so. The bathroom had issues of its own. Late at night, you could be in the kitchen or living room and literally hear the water faucets turn on and start running at full blast. It was always fun trying to work up the courage to turn them off. I was once in the bathroom by myself doing what teenage girls do, staring in the mirror, fixing my makeup, (laughs) whatever, when I felt what I thought was a woman's hand pressed down firmly on my left shoulder blade. I turned around to see who it was, but... No one was there. On a separate occasion, I got up around 5.30 one morning to use the bathroom, and I found my youngest sister sitting in a tub of cold water. This I find very disturbing, this story. I asked her what she was doing, and she said she was taking a bath late after everyone had already gone to bed, and during her bath, she saw what looked like a woman's leg step out of the towel closet next to the tub. She was so terrified that she pulled the shower curtain closed and sat there too scared to move or even run the water to warm it up. She literally sat in that cold tub for hours before I found her. Oh, I know. To get her a nice warm blanket and cuddle with her. Over the years, we just got used to strange things happening. It was always very random, not like a constant daily thing. Just when you, you would think nothing had happened in a while, suddenly something else would happen. I think the funniest thing that happened 
was when we were all sitting in the living room one night talking about all the creepy things that we experienced and comparing our stories. My older sister's fiance was there and he didn't believe any of it. He told (laughs) us it was all our imagination. He was sitting in a recliner and next to his chair there on the floor was a boom box, which was not being used. Literally, as soon as he voiced his doubt about believing our stories, the cassette and the boom box began playing. His eyes turned as big as saucers. I will never forget the look on his face. It was priceless, and we still laugh about it to this day. There are many other events that occurred in the house and around the area. I will have to save those for another time. Thank you for your time and providing such a great show, Crystal. They had so many things happen in that house. They sure did. Wow. I don't even know where to start, but you are you were right. I the the one about the sister in the tub was really something about that one just oh, bothered me yeah. that it traumatized her so much that she was willing to just sit in cold water and tell too somebody, scared to get too scared out or move or do anything. Until somebody came into the bathroom. She would have sat there all night. Gosh. And there and also that you know, the laundry being opened, the drawers, they shut them all. They knew they were shut and then comes back and they're open. Oh, that house was haunted. And by the way, I looked it up. It, Mocaine, M-O-K-A-N-E. Yep. Okay. It currently, population 188. Oh, I way overguessed with my 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone that in That almost Mocaine, makes it scarier. <laughs> everyone in Mocaine probably knows where the haunted house is. Yeah. It, is all you guess. Mocaine listeners, I know you've got <laughs> stories. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Everyone has to know. Oh, yeah. That's the haunted house. If you like this show and you want an ad-free experience, sign up to be a premium subscriber. Do that through applepodcast.com. You can try it three days free. Sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes for all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Thank you for listening.